safety procedure for the ease of the lockdown in Lagos. And who else is better suited to take us through the discourse other than the Director General for the Lagos State Safety Commission in the person of Larry Mojola. Nice to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Nice you to be here. Right. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. So we're talking safety concerns, really. So uh, the latest right now is that we're having a gradual ease of the lockdown. Um, part of that process, which uh, Mr. Governor has put in place, especially for business concerns and uh, cooperatives and all of that, there must be certain things that they must adhere to. Is that correct? Absolutely. All right. It's um, very important for us to ensure that we go back to work, we go back to play in a very safe manner, um, in a safe strategic manner where we're living with the COVID, but we're also safe. Mm. Uh, so what are these uh, procedures? What are the safety concerns that are put in place right now for uh, all the places to adhere to? What are some of them? I just want you through what we've been doing in the last six months since the pandemic broke out. Mm -hmm. um, we were tasked to the man with the mandate of ensuring um, social distancing, um, restriction of gatherings. Um, initial was about 50 people and then went to 25 and then to 20. Right. At that time, we had to um, stop a number of events and we had to explain to people that the COVID um, pandemic was um, within the society. Uh, a lot of people didn't understand what we were talking about. Um, we, we sensitized them with flyers. We had video displays. We tried to explain to them that this, this was a, an unusual time and everybody had to play their part mm -hmm. in trying to reduce the spread of the virus um, following this um, we went into the lockdown the first lockdown 1.0 and then the second extended lockdown All right. and ever since then we've now been easing um, the ease of lo lockdown um, manufacturing companies are back to work um, corporates are back to work a number of um, business entities are back to work we're now at the point where we're now easing social um, centers social and religious centers uh, but before we we have, we, we, before we ease them, right. we've also put together um, guidelines and safety protocols okay. um, that, that, that guide the activities um, around these centers. So let's look at some of these guidelines and these, uh, these protocols that you just talked about. Now. Okay, so um, with regards to the social centers that fall under the hospitality sector, so we'll be referring to restaurants, um, lounges bars um, not all of them are open yet um in the state right now what about hotels? Restaurants. Are hotels within that yeah we we'll, would we'll like to group hotel hotels as part of that um hotels um cinema so there are quite a number of them under social centers okay um and then we now also have the religious center so i'll speak briefly as to some of the things that we expect mm -hmm. so with regards to the social centers first of all the most important thing is training um, and capacity development for their staff okay. in terms of best practice for their staff, their suppliers, and the third party personnel, right. um, i.e., the security, the delivery personnel. Um, they need to also understand that they're going back to a workplace that is different from the norm. They are the first line of. Um, of protection they're the ones that will carry out the temperature checks etc um, and also they also need to wear appropriate P PPE okay. so that people that are coming in would not infect them right that's um, the personal so protective um, personal gears. protective equipment absolutely right. so say for example they've all been trained they all understand the safety protocols that are required the next thing is the conditions of entry uh, it's not free entry like um, it used to be um, now we need to do temperature scans for to check the temperature levels they need to know what temperatures are acceptable. Anything above 37.5 um, is no entry. Mm. Also, um, there's also a no mask, no entry policy um, as stated in the guidelines that they need to ensure you, you're not wearing your mask. Um, you so you can't enter these this social enter. centers. Absolutely, absolutely. Th thirdly is the numbers that are, that are allowed in. Um, a lot of social centers have limits based on their space. Um, so what we've said is with regards to restaurants, 50% um, occupancy. So based on your space, if you had got, you'd have had to calculate the, the number that you can normally um, take in in one go. Right. Once you're 50%, the, the security guard or the personnel at the gates, they need to know that they won't allow more people in. This is to ensure that people are not physically gathered together. Right. So after all these then there's certain things that you also need now need to provide inside your facility okay um 
signages is one. There has to be signages, wall and um, floor signages, um, continually showing people that this virus is still around. There's a need for people to be sensitized and to continually be alert to the fact that, um, yes, they're having a good time. They're having drinks, they're, they're eating, they're sharing meals with their family, but they still need to um, set, um, be conscious of the fact that the virus is still out there. All right. Besides this, um, other things that I required would be the provision of alcohol-based um, hand sanitizers and um, dispensers at strategic locations within mm -hmm. these um, facilities. All right. um, ensure the appropriate use of personal protective equipment. That's the face shields, the nose masks, gloves where required, overalls where required. Um, besides this, um, a lot of these facilities need to provide running water um, soap and hand washing at the, points, entrance. at the entrance and also even within because right. um, a lot of people at times you've had a meal you need to wash your hands mm -hmm. so it's a very important that water is um, provided good quality water that can be used to to wash the hands um, aside to this the the physical layout also is very important and okay. um, to ensure that your tables are spaced out well um, we're advising two meters um, apart. If, apart exactly if people come in as a family they need to book in advance so they they put them in one corner and um, they don't mix them with people that come in that are um, singles um, or people that are coming in from a different family so that way you're you're clustering people um, in a very safe manner mm -hmm. um, Part of the protocols also is the, in, the importance of increasing the, the frequency of cleaning and sanitizing touch points. These are touch points are places that people regularly touch, like tables, That's right. chairs, um, hand railings, etc. I mean, taps. These are places where there's high traffic in terms of um, in terms of touch. Right. So the cleaning team or the man facility maintenance team they need to continually go around. Um, to ensure that these um, touch points are sanitized. Now, all these that you have mentioned, all these guidelines that you are talking about right now in the program, you've been able to pass all of these to the social centers? Absolutely. We've had a number of sessions with them. Um, b before, about a month ago, when we, were, we had been priming them to get them ready for, for um, startup of operations, right. um, which was announced um, on the 1st of August for the 14th of um, August mm -hmm. um, for, for social centers, for restaurants right. at 50%. And um, we've had a number of um, training sessions with um, these restaurant operators. Uh, we had one last Wednesday where we had about 450 of them um, come online, the okay. Zoom training sessions. Um, and some of these sessions are very detailed where we talk to them about infection prevention and control, um, how to interact safely, knowing that COVID exists. Um, you know, so they've, they've, we've, we've, we've prepped you've, you've them. Done all yes, of that. we've done all, all of right, that. All right, so we've, is there any other thing that they're supposed to meet before they begin operations? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. So we've also... Um, ensure that there's, there's a register to open. Uh -huh. Let's initiative. talk about that, re re yes. that register because I know Mr. Okay. Governor yes. was uh, hinting about that back in July. Mm. So is that register, is it operational now? Oh yes, the register to open initiative has been operational for over six weeks. Um, we've registered about 4,500 business entities across the state from cinemas to restaurants to bars oh, good. to lounges, um, parks and gardens. It's a very simple process where um, you need to be prepared. Um, you need to be prepared in terms of the data concerning your entity, okay. um, physical pictures. Um, once you go onto the website, it's uh, www.lasgsafetyreg.com. Okay. Once you go onto that platform, it's um, a process that you can complete within 10 minutes. If you have all your details ready, you'll take pictures of your facility, the proposed plan with regards to internal spacing, um, and a host of other things. Um, safety um, precautions that you have, that you have um, um, stepped up um, with regards to your property all right. uh, or your facilities, as well as a, as a number of other safety measures that you have put in place. Um, while still on the platform, there's a video that has been uploaded that shows how we used to live and how we expect to live going forward. All right. Um, thereafter, um, once you're complete with everything, um, you get a, a, a number, a unique identifier number. Okay. And within 7 to 14 days, you would um, have uh, um, people, officials of the commission, come in to verify. So they come for inspection? Absolutely. Of that facility? Yes. They'll All come right. in to, to either physically verify or virtually verify mm. um, the facility. And once once that is done, then you get a provisional safety clearance um, certificate. Right. This certificate then 
guarantees that once the state government says it's okay for your type of business to open, you can open without any fear of contravention. Which is good. So if I'm in this category of uh, operating of these businesses we just mentioned, and I am yet to open, I'm yet to do this, can I come physically to your office? Uh, no, we, we discourage people coming <laughs> through. <laughs> okay. we, we will just want them to do that. Online. Yes, because we're trying to reduce the number of people coming on also to the to the Alausa uh, campus. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So, and you said it's www.lesgsafetyreg.com. Um, yes. All right, then. So let's talk about the others. Um, just uh, on the 7th of August, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, the religious or uh, worship centers. We're giving the, the go-ahead to reopen, as the case may be. Uh, what are the guidelines that you put in place for these uh, religious centers? Yeah, absolutely. We, again, um, we've been um, engaging very closely with the religious leaders, um, the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Lagos chapter, the imams um, across Lagos state, and uh, we'd come up with several guidelines, and eventually we all had um, technical sessions we looked at the pluses the minuses the possibilities the things that were not possible things that were practical things that were not too practical and we've come up with an agreed guideline um that we all agreed on before the the religious centers were open i'll just talk you through some of the things that right. um that are standard are, are mandatory okay um the, the first is that um services would hold um, on selected days of the week, um, Fridays for mosques, um, Saturdays for um, churches that are that open on Saturdays, and right. on Sundays for other churches. Um, these are the only three days that you're allowed to have services. You're not allowed to have midweek services or vigils. Um, services should be kept between one to two hours, and. Um, we're also we've also said that 50 percent of of worshipers are allowed per service okay however you can run multiple services, services. yes but also we've also said that um before the service and after the service there's a need for different disinfection of your facility and between services um we can have wipe downs in terms of hygiene um before the next service is um started um we've also said that yes social gatherings such as marriages and naming ceremonies burials etc mm -hmm. can take place um but with a maximum of 50 people not more than 50 people okay um we've said that there will be no use of air conditioners and windows must be opened um worshipers must wash their hands with soap and water right. and um in the event that they're not washing stations available sanitizers must be provided right. um, again the no mask no entry um, policy must be at place at all times. Okay, that's also to be that's also compulsory as well? It's very compulsory, yes. It's <laughs> absolutely compulsory. Okay. Um, yeah. Alright, so who can register? All of them? Well, the honest truth is that um, religious centers are exempted from from um, registering, but we've had quite a number of them register. We've had a total of about 1,250 of them register hmm. since we went online. Um, re they register for their own um, documentation processes. They register for um, their own um, safety, um, internal safety control processes to ensure that they're also ticking the box with regards um, government guidelines and regulations and we've verified quite a number of them as at the um, last count we've, we've verified over 57 percent of them oh, across wonderful. the state so we're pleased to note that um the the religious centers have are complying so they are complying yes. very well all right then so i'm going to allow people to talk to you uh, but before then quickly how can i know that this facility i'm going into or this business that they've been certified by the Lagos State Safety Commission. Yeah, so th that's the, um, the next step. Um, we're, we're encouraging people to um, paste their provisional safety clearance certificates um, at the end point of entry into their facilities so that people can see that they've been, um, they've been verified and that they're safe places. Um, but beyond that, we're also looking at how we can deploy technology. Um, this is um, the days of technology where we'll also on that same portal will then have um people can then check 
to see the status of um, some of the places that they want to go to. So you can check to see if um, your social center, the restaurant, has been um, approved oh. and it's safe. You can just check that even before leaving um, your house or before booking in um, for a table at the restaurant. And how soon do we expect it to be put in That's place? That's ongoing. It's ongoing. It will be launched soon. It's okay. an add-on to the existing platform. Okay. One month, two months. You can give us a precise I, I time. I won't be able to give you a precise time, but it's, it's in the works. Yeah. Right. We're, we're currently testing it, yes. All right. The Lagos Traffic Radio, that is 6.1 FM. Your side mirror is the program. It's an extended version of the program. And today, we're looking at safety procedure for reopening of uh, the economy right here in Lagos. And our guest is the Director General of the Lagos State Safety Commission in the person of uh, Larry Mojola. All right, then. Let's hear from you. You can also join the conversation right now on 809 Seven, seven. Let us know some of your concerns as we talk safety this morning for gradual reopening or perhaps the reopening of uh, the economy here in Lagos. What are some of those things that you need to bring to the DG? Feel free to do so on 0809-912-0777. Right, 0809-912-0777. Numbers that you can connect with us on the program this morning to express yourself as it relates to uh, the focus. All right, then. Um, how do we really determine, or perhaps you can give us now, what's the level of compliance so far so good from some of these uh, procedures that you put in place? Um, since the religious centers opened um, on the 7th and the 9th, 8th and the 9th, um, we, we, we've gone around quite a number of them. Um, we've, we, we've, um, um, the, the, the compliance has been monitored by the Safety Commission and the Ministry of um, Home Affairs where a large number of our staff go out to ensure compliance and to be very honest we've seen huge numbers of compliance um the first week yes the number of people were still not sure of how to go about it how to get data to um for some of the people that are coming in to worship but by this um, the last weekend the weekend that just went by um the, we've seen a higher level of compliance. We'd we'll like to put the compliance at above eighty percent across oh, good. religious centers. Good. So lots of people are complying. What about for the social centers, which you talked about? So for the social centers, um, a lot of them were allowed to go back um, on the fourteenth, which was Friday. Um, so we Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we were um, on the roads um, monitoring and checking out for compliance and. Um, sensitizing a lot more people, correcting them in areas where we found out that they, there were shortcomings. Again, um, a large number of um, compliance. The only thing that I would like to state is that um, th there's a bit of a gray area. So there's some restaurants that also have bars and lounges um, in, in, in them. In them, yes. So um, some of them were not 100% compliant. Um, the, 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 the internal um, crowd spilled into um, the bars, bars and the lounges. It's important to state that bars, bars and lounges are not open yet. Um, aside this, beaches also are not open. So if you have a restaurant... Beaches are not open yet? Beaches are not open ah, yet, yes. Beaches but I'm hearing people open. talk about going to the yeah. beach. So we've had to, we've had to do a lot of enforcement with regards beaches over the weekend um, we've, we've had to shut and close a number of beaches okay um, and we'll, i'd like to use this opportunity to reiterate that the beaches are not open yet the bars are not open yet lounges are not open yet and nightclubs are not open yet oh all right so all these uh, places which still fall under the social centers are that correct absolutely but they're not open yet absolutely all right you can talk to us zero eight zero nine nine one two zero seven 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 numbers that you can call us perhaps uh, express yourself as relates to this talk to me hello there hello all right uh, i guess we lost that one uh, but like i said we're talking safety procedure for the reopening of uh, the economy right here in lagos and of course we're looking at it from the perspective of the lagos state safety commission they are the regulators as relates to this and he's talking about certain criteria that must be met so if you are adhering to this or perhaps there's some gray areas uh, you can feel free to bring that to him and then he'll be able to respond appropriately hello good morning good, good morning good morning all right good morning yeah my name is mr james yeah, james i want to ask the gentleman uh, if uh, saloon has opened saloon yes james where are you calling from i'm from from ikeja okay so you want to know if uh, saloons are allowed to open all right okay thank you very much yeah. thank you okay so are they allowed saloons mr james from ikeja yes saloons are allowed to open on the condition that they're registered 
um, they're also part of the entities that we are required to register on the on the platform. Um, so if they've registered and they they have their provisional compliance certificates, yes, they can open. Okay. All right then, James. I hope you got that. They must be registered before they can fully practice or we can fully uh, perform their statutory duty. So, and uh, he's mentioned the. Uh, that's the portal that they can go to for registration, but we'll still reiterate that during the course of the program as well. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Femi is my name from Maryland. All right, Femi, you need to speak up. Talk to me. Okay, sir. I just want to know, these days, we notice some things lots of people put forth. I used to see them in the evening. I don't know if they, because if we are protecting residents of Lagos, I think to take control of the people coming into the state. Like last night, even this last night I'm talking to you, I saw it 9 11, filled with people, no mass they were looking. I saw them at the bigger end of Lagos, Lagos uh, coming, into, coming into Lagos. And I think the Lagos State Commission should do something about that. So thank you very much. All right. People flooding into Lagos are the we hours. All right. What's your response to that? Yes, security is everyone's business. Same thing with safety. Um, we we say that if if you if you notice it, um, flag it and um, escalate it. Um, so if you have noticed any unusual gatherings or influx to people coming into state, into the state, particularly after the hours of um, the coffee, um, kindly escalate it. Um, All right. There are a number of agencies, government agencies that can that you can escalate to, aside the safety commission. All right. Let me take this call. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Uh, there is something like that uh, from my caller. All right, now you need to give us your name and then turn down the volume of that radio. We can hardly hear you. My name is Adibayo. Adibayo, you need to speak up. Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm right now at uh, Lagos Island, but I live in Kola in Faja. Okay. Even during the pandemic, the, the, the churches are very, very bad. They are on, up till now they are on, no difference. They do the normal thing they are doing that is like the agencies are not coming to that end. So okay, so you're saying now that churches within the color axis. Color Adusi, they're not respecting the protocols, the guidelines. Uh, so even the pandemic was very serious until now. Okay, all right. We've taken note of that and I'm sure the Director General will respond, okay? Okay, okay, then. Thank you. All right. So he's talking about his locality uh, or perhaps his community. People or churches still operational even when the lockdown was very much on. So what are you doing? That means you're not able to come the entire state. A state of 22 million people <laughs> plus is it's it's difficult. difficult. Yes. But I mean, the, the thing is, we, we rely a lot on whistleblowers. Um, to call out from McPad, I believe. Um, we would, we, would, we, would, we, would, we would love you to, to reach out to us to give us details of such a church. Um, right now, churches are allowed to worship on Sundays. Yeah, but he's saying they're not adhering to the guidelines. No face masks, yeah, nothing absolutely. else. Absolutely. So if they're not adhering to the guidelines, then we will guidelines them. We will go there in. All right. We'll go there to sensitize them. And um, if we find out that they're continually um, practicing the same unsafe math, math, math um, protocols, then we'll have to, All right. to to close them. Let's take this one. Hello there. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, I can hear you. What's your name? It's David Good morning. It's Engineer Joseph. Hey, Engineer Joseph. How are you doing? God bless you, sir. God bless I'm you. Fine. Good morning, DJ. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. So I just have three things to put as a question. Number one, uh, is there any punishment for Worship center that have failed to register. Okay. That is one. That is one. Two. I want to believe the registration is free. Two. You want to believe that what? The registration is free. Registration, okay. That is two. Number three. I don't know if safety commission has something to do, have anything to do with the, this law of coffee, of closing, uh, coming home, uh, I mean, uh, 10 or so, 4 to 10. 8 a.m. in the morning, 4 p.m. 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the evening. I don't know if the safety commission have anything in conjunction with that. That's the coffee. Yes. Yes, the coffee. If yes, I think we need to consider legal stage to reconsider time for legal stage. 
Okay. That's your three, my three questions. All right. Thank you very much, Engineer Joseph. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Engineer Joseph, for the attempt to answer your three questions. So the first was on worship centers. Mm. Um, worship Any punishment? Cent worship centers are exempted from, from registering. I explained earlier, Engineer Joseph, that a lot of them that have registered are registered to fulfill their own internal safety protocols. Um, but so as such, there's no, there's no fine. Um, the registration is absolutely free. Um, a number of people have been trying to make money off this. So, um, we will discourage, would also ask that um, you bring to the attention of government, uh, anyone that goes around um, wanting to collect uh, money for this service. It's absolutely free. Okay. So there's no there's, fee attached there's to There's no fee attached to it. Yes. Safety actually. Commission is not charging anything? Not at all. Safety Commission <laughs> is not charging anything. Um, Lagos State Government is not charging anything. Um, the cost for the portal has been taken care of by the government. And uh, Mr. Governor has made it very clear that um, the interest is not to to add additional taxes to the people of Lagos State. Um, Lagos State is, is is ready to to support and assist as many entities as possible to get them back to business. All right, yes. so it's free. So it's absolutely free. All right, free. curfew <laughs> is it a Lagos thing? The curfew again is um, was placed by the federal government. Um, at one, when the when the pandemic broke out earlier in the year, um, as such, it's, it's the federal government that that um, that will, will be able to speak about that. All right, all right. So I mean, he's just trying to see how we can make a case for Lagos because uh, Lagos is peculiar, traffic situation and all of that. And then we're saying we're having a gradual ease for social centres and all of that. Maybe that can be considered for things to operate better. But let's hear from you. Zero eight zero nine nine one two. 0777. Hello, good morning. Hello, Tito. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, that's the voice. Uh, I'm trying to. Ah, okay, Jometa. <laughs> Femi, Femi. Okay, yeah, yeah, Femi. <laughs> Shofu, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -uh, you will remember the song. <laughs> Very good. Where are you calling us from this morning, Shofu? Well, I'm just on my way to work. I'm still around the um, um, where is this area now? Agbe Road. Agbe Road. Okay. All right. Agbe Road. Yeah. So let's hear from you. What's your concern for the safety commission? Yeah, actually, my concern, you know, just like the last but one speaker spoke, is about these restrictions and this uh, ease of lockdown. You know, in one breath we are saying there is ease and there are restrictions. But enforcing the restriction is another thing. And I will tell you why. Mm. Uh, on Friday, I was going to walk somewhere that is church. Somewhere around College Road. We are having a burial. You know, and uh, you can, I can see, you know, even from the car parked outside and then try to look into the church because there was traffic there. I saw a lot of people inside the church, and there are policemen there, even trying to direct traffic. I think the the the, the special policemen with their with their bus there. So I'm looking at if there is something like that, and then they now put law enforcement again. Mm. So who is checking who? Mm. And I'm sure this is not just a one-off thing. There are incidents here. There are events. And then you see police van and police personnel there directing traffic. Mm. Even last month. And people are not complying. And I've even had people saying that this um, coronavirus issue is a government propaganda. <laughs> you can now see that it's right. it propaganda for government to siphon or to get to, 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 to money. I don't know where they are getting that from. Mm. And in some discussion, they say, they be, we walk about, we go to the market, uh, there's no face mask, there's nothing. So why, why, are, you, why are we being bothered? Right. And you can see that uh, people go about their business, not even putting the safety to the uh, uh, to, 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 to place. So my concern is the same law enforcement that are supposed to enforce this thing, they are the ones who are stationed, they are wearing this kind of thing is being perpetrated. Right. Who's going to arrest you? All right. Pertinent question indeed. All right, then. Thank you so much, Femi, for connecting with us on the program this morning. All right. So let, let's go back to that. I mean, and that that's, that's poses some serious uh, teasers and, and things for you 
as uh, a regulatory agency. So how can we do that I mean, in terms of enforcement? Because he's citing enforcers now who are also helping people in, in some way or the other yeah. to compromise. It's a difficult one, but um, there, there's a way out, and the way out is to go direct to the root source. So, so um, you, you have the owners of the facilities. Every, every single facility or venue has an owner, um, and, and that's what we have um, focused on. Um, we have, uh, right now, there, there's a limit on gatherings to 50 people, um, and when we, go, when we go around doing our regular patrol, we find out that um, they're, they're more than um, the stipulated number. What we do is we go directly to the owners of this, these um, facilities and we request that they shut down those, those events. And because the owners of the facilities don't want to have their facilities sealed, they will carry out whatever um, we, 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 we tell them to do in line with the regulations and the laws. So if I have a facility that accommodates about 3,000 people, so you're saying now I can allow 1,500? Is that okay? Oh no! If that if it's a church, if it's a service, if it's a service day. So yeah. say for example, it's a mosque or a, ch or a church, mm -hmm. and your facility can accommodate three thousand people. And after going through your um, physical distancing measures, your two meters um, horizontal vertical, and you can still accommodate one thousand five hundred people, that is allowed. Okay, that's allowed. Yes, you can do up to fifty percent of your. But but if it's say for example a a, a wedding or a funeral, mm -hmm. there's a maximum limit of 50 people that you can't go above. You can't go above that no, 50. You can't go above that 50. All right. Yes. All right, then, 0809-912-0777. You still have uh, some little time to talk to us this program this morning. Let's hear from you. The Safety Commission is uh, talking about safety concerns and the procedures put in place. Hello, good morning. Uh, we have a message here okay, on WhatsApp. All right, let's take that. All right, it says, uh, good morning, DG. Uh, please, may we know if vocational training centers with a class size of 20 uh, needs uh, clearance certificates? And if so, how do they proceed since they are not listed on your portal? Vocational training yes, centers. Uh, Fire Williams. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for that, Fire Williams. So... Are they also included, vocational training centers? No, they're not. They're not included. Um, they, they can go ahead and um, have um, classes of 20. Okay. Um, again, they can have classes of up to 50, but not more than 50. And um, But again, the, the regular protocols have to be observed. All right. That's just an advice for them. Absolutely. Okay, then. So, Fire Williams, I hope you've taken note of that. Let me see if we can still connect with you on the program. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Larry, and I'm calling you from um, Surulere right now. All right, Larry, go ahead. Yeah, um, I want to commend the, our guest on the today's day. Okay. Um, Thank you very think, much, sir. Yes, sir. I think more is of the government part. I'll tell you why. Don't blame people who say that there is no coronavirus, the government is trying to control the school thing. Leadership is by example, is by showing it, is by doing it. Do you understand? Right. Remember, I am from the Onikoi family. I could remember when the coronation of the Oniru was going on. In fact, it's not singular as I was highly disappointed in the governor. I'm telling you the fact. You need to see how that place was compacted in it. Okay. Now, if I could witness that, and the governor is sitting right there, how do you expect me to believe such things? Apart from that, you discover that most of our elites are the ones flouting these rules more. Somebody like me, I have my car, I always sanitize it every morning before I go out. And in the evening, once I come back, I must sanitize for the safety of myself, my children, and my loved ones. So I really want the commission to look more than the police who are actually flouting these rules. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let's, so let's turn it back to you, Mr. Mujala. Um, elites flouting these safety guidelines, these protocols, what would be your response? Um, 
I think it's about us um, looking at some things that have worked out and things that have not worked out as well and um, trying to fine tune and improve on the things that have not worked out as, as planned. Um, there are always exceptions to the rule and um, what we do in the safety commission is we observe we monitor a number of these um, events um, or gatherings that are going on and um, we, we carry out lessons learned to report and uh, we share this with um, our elite um, in court okay. um, so there was another um, installation over the weekend the right. Alara of Ilara, and some of the lessons that were learned um, from, from the, the previous, previous one. ones yes it, it didn't repeat itself so um, it, it's a continuous process of um, improvement of fine-tuning our processes and our protocols and um, um, with with everyone's cooperation and collaboration we can really just get better maybe the first one caught everyone unawares and um, considering that particular uh, part of the state where you have people uh, I mean that kind of um, coronation even though some will say there's no excuse but that kind of coronation is one that caught a lot of people in a way maybe that's the reason all right so as we take this to the end this morning Mujula, what's your message our people what's your parting thoughts to our people as it relates to some of these safety concerns and the measures um it, it's for us to go back to the basics for us to understand that this this virus is here it will not be going anytime in the immediate um, immediately um, it will still be with us for a, for a bit but for us to be able to fight it we all need to um, work together and there's some very basic things that I would just like to reiterate to mm -hmm. the general public one is the use of masks it's very very important that once we are in public spaces, public places. Let us use our masks. Okay. Um, we've got a lot of complaints that they're not comfortable, they're uncomfortable. Um, people react to them. Yes, we know all this, but it's the sacrifice that we need to make for the for for this for us to collectively be able to fight this virus. Any numbers that they can contact you guys if there's uh, any infractions? Uh, absolutely, there are quite a number of numbers. All right, um, can we run through those numbers? Yes, um, it's 0818. Okay. One zero zero two two three three. That's O eight one eight one zero zero two two three three. Okay. O eight O two three eight seven nine seven seven one. All right. Okay, then. So they can run through these numbers. If they have yes. any infractions, they can report this to you. Absolutely. All right, then we'll continue to retrieve that right out here on this frequency as the days go by. Let me say a very big thank you to you for coming on the program this thank morning. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so I've been speaking with the Director General of the Lagos State Safety Commission, Larry Mujola. Of course, a big shout-out going out to Adomi Oko, who is the Assistant Director of Public Affairs for the Lagos State Sub Safety Commission for putting all of this in place. All right, so your side mirror this morning has been produced by... Uh, Kuridi Bamishile, thank you so much. And of course, to our executive producer, Tayo Akonle, the social media team for making this happen as well on our social media platform. Like we do say, you can always continue that conversation there. Our Twitter handle, at Lagos Traffic 961, Facebook page, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. And you can follow me too on my own Twitter handle, at Oteri Victor.